Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to look at how to get Sensible World of Soccer running on the Steam Deck using DOSBox. Originally I made a DOSBox video which I'll pop, pop up in the corner, so if you haven't seen it please do check it out. Right, so there's a few things we need to get going on, so let's go over to desktop mode. So you should be familiar how to do that, and we'll just get over there now. Once we're there we need to check out our flat seal settings. I go into detail in the first DOSBox video so please make sure that you check this out. The main thing to check here is that we have granted access to the SD card if, like me, that's where you've stored your ROMs. So we'll open that up and I'll just make the screen bigger so we can see and we just want to go all the way down to the bottom and we need to have the file system, we need to have other files selected and just drop in the route to the SD card. Now in the first video, um, I explain how to set this up. You just click the new little folder and then just type the path in there. Right, so once that's done, what we need to do is we need to go into our .sh file. So we need to triple double check that this is correct. We need to find the path location of where the runner run file should be. I quite like the word runner. Let's call it a runner, where the runner file should be. So we just need to find the .exe file and copy that location. Now I've already got this set up so I'll just quickly edit this. Again in the first video it, I will go through the detail of how to set this up. So we just need to copy in between the speech marks where the, the, the path location we just copied. So we just need to paste that in place and then save that file. Once that's saved We'll just close this down and we need to add it into Steam. So we need to open up the Steam application on desktop mode. Just double click, again make it bigger and click in the bottom corner there should be add non-Steam game. Click on the locator, find out where it's stored. So primary for my SD card, emulators, ROMs and then DOS. And we just need to find the .sh file that we just created. Select that and add that in. Once that's added into Steam, we can go across to the library to find where it is. And once we've found it, we can have a quick look at some of the settings. Now, I've already set the images up on this. This is the file that I already had on there. The other one's on there, somewhere a bit down the bottom. But we'll just use this for the time being. It, it what does work. I tested this earlier, so we've got this all working fine. Once that's done, we close that down and we head back into game mode. Once we're in the game mode, we need to remap our controls. Now this game is a very simple control point of game, so there's just a couple we need to do. So what I would suggest doing is setting it as the gamepad and then, or no, actually let's, let's go to a template and do the gamepad with joystick trackpad so they're all our buttons that we have well we can change but that's as default so we just need to edit the layout and we need to set the d-pad as the number keys because this game uses number keys so we go over to the keyboard and so we've got eight as up then we've got two as down we've got four as left and six as right Save that down and do the same with the joysticks. Now I've turned the right joystick off just in case it does anything. And we need to change joystick to directional pad and do the same again. So eight up, two down, four left, six right. Then we need to also add in the buttons. So the other button we use is control. So I'm going to set all the face buttons as in the button buttons as control. So I can press any button and it will pass, shoot, do whatever I want to do. One more thing to quickly just add on here as well. I have added, or I will add um, another button and it is the pause button. And that is just simply P on the keyboard. Um, yeah, and one more, we'll go back. I did set another one, but we'll go back. So we'll just view the layout, so that's what we've got. So we can see that we've got all the control keys set as A, B, Y, and X. And we've got all the left joystick and the directional pads set as the key pad buttons. 
One more if you do want to add it, and I believe that I have added this. I did this earlier and I honestly can't remember. So we need to apply that and we can add escape to one of the buttons, which I go back and add. So we'll go back into the buttons, scroll down and we'll add the select if you're old school gamer as an escape button. So that's just the escape key set on the keyboard. Once that's done, we will get that all started. So that's just on the screen now if you want to see what the layout was and we'll give it a test and see how we go. It's been a while since I've uh, played this game, so I might be a bit pants, but I hope you enjoy. So there you go, that's it. If you've enjoyed this video, please do uh, drop a like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments if you found this video helpful, what other tips you would like to see, what tips you can give to me. I mean, by no means I'm an expert, but, uh, and I'd like to delve more into DOS gaming. And don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Enjoy the game. Free kick there. Keeper's come, he's got it! Referee! Now, come on, get things going with the throw.